The last one. Awesome, let me get my camera. Oh. Do you ever feel like everything is in a constant rush? I find one of the hardest things for me to do is take a step back. Take a moment to see what I need to do next. Take a moment to breathe. Time is an obsession of mine. No matter what you do, it keeps passing by. Tick tock, tick tock. I swear I could almost hear them if it wasn't for this constant ringing in my ears. There's a good chance it's just tinnitus, but I think it's just a slurry of thoughts in my brain formulating all at once. It never goes away. I think the feeling of true silence would be terrifying because in that silence, I'd have to confront the truth that every second slipping away is a reminder of the life half lived, of dreams left chasing shadows. But maybe, just maybe, I can change that. This feels like someone's watching me. Anyway, I've always been a fan of those magnetic levitation projects. It's such a fascinating concept. And there's a few ways to do it, and one is slightly more complicated than the other. The first way, the complicated way, is to take a permanent magnet, another permanent magnet, and then inside you have electromagnets. An electromagnet is just a magnet you can control with current. This one pulls it in, and then you take the electromagnets and you repel. This is the more complicated way, but it allows you to levitate it vertically. This takes way more components, I'm not doing it that way. The way I'm doing it is, again, you take a permanent magnet, neodymium, electromagnet, gravity's gonna pull this magnet down, and this one is going to pull it up, and you turn this on and off to oppose the forces of gravity. So arguably, the most important part of this project is the electromagnet, and if you search online, this is what you'll uh, come across most commonly. And the problem with these is that this component is basically all ferrous metal. So there's just too much metal in this, and that means it's too magnetic when it's powered off. I know that doesn't seem like an issue, but because there's also ferrous metal around the outside, you're getting pull from all over. And that means when it's powered off, you're just, you just can't get the right amount of pull to cause it to levitate. It's just too strong and in the wrong place. And when I'm doing projects like this, I'm always trying to find simple solutions to these problems so that basically anyone else can do it without doing something really complicated. The first thing I thought of was the coil inside of a solenoid. So taking this apart, taking the coil out from it, and using that. You could put like a bolt in here, but what I found was I couldn't get enough current to these. These heated up a lot and they just didn't have enough pulling power. Then it turns out if you know what to search, you can just find the perfect solution online. It's a strong electromagnet with a threaded mount core, and this is perfect. You just give them 12 volts, and they become a powerful electromagnet. So I took an old custom PCB that I had laying around that's got my HTC module on it, which is just a microcontroller. It's got a MOSFET, a 12 volt line in, and some screw terminals for some IO. And then I took the coil, hooked it up to the MOSFET, and I connected a linear hall sensor. Now a linear hall sensor is a sensor that gives an analog voltage depending how much magnetic flux there is in front of it. And then I've got a program running where it will turn the coil on when the magnet's too far using that analog reading, and then it'll turn it off when it's too close. And when we take the magnet and we place it under the sensor, it starts to detect it, and it turns on the coil. And then we have a levitating object. See, this is really simple, but uh, you'll see it starts to oscillate, and then it could drop, like it just did. So we might need to do a little bit of tuning and now that I've confirmed that this design and circuit does work, we just need to make a custom circuit board. Okay, so we start with how we always start, and we open up Keyhead, and we start a new pro- Damn it! I can't work like this. With him. Doing that. You know what he wants. Hey. 
Build montage. Build montage. You did some really great work today. What is it? It's a Christmas tree. Can't you tell? That's a weird looking Christmas tree. Yeah, I guess I really didn't explain that much, did I? I mean, I know it's no spinning Christmas tree of death. My plan this year was to make something that everyone else could make too. I miss those projects. Here, check this out. So on top of just making a really simple circuit board with some 3D printed mounts, coil, ornament, for me personally, I'm going to make a whole clear levitating Christmas ornament Christmas tree tongue twister. And since I just made a custom circuit board and sent it off to PCB way, we really need to get 3D printing. Not a lot of time left. Let's go. All right, we got a small problem. We got all the components, all the parts we need, everything, except one thing's missing. Uh, the circuit boards. Yeah, they're not here yet. We're absolutely running out of time. They're sitting in a box somewhere. They shipped a long time ago. We can't do anything because everything connects to those. Everything. So here's what I'm thinking. I have like a whole bin of these Adafruit Trinket M0s and couple, not enough, but some of these proto boards that I could get by tomorrow. So the plan is take these and these and build them all by hand. At least some of them. One issue is I only have surface mount components for some of the things that I need that would be really hard to solder on those and just take too much time, but I can get those by tomorrow. So I'll make one of these, see how it goes, see how long it takes, and then go from there. But if the other ones arrive, the actual circuit boards, then I'll still build one of those to make sure they work so that everyone can also make one. So hopefully that's everything I need right here. All right, here it is. I really don't want to make 15 more of these, but I will if I have to. Adafruit Trinket N0. This is an LM7805, just converting it to uh, 12 volts to 5 volts. There's the MOSFET IRLZ44N. And we got the uh, linear hall sensor. All right, it's all set up. Moment of truth. Works! Works better than expected! Alright, 15 more to go. Making one of something is always a challenge, but making 16 of that same thing, that's a whole other animal. You're no longer creating a singular object, you're creating a process. You have to plan ahead, look for bottlenecks, figure out where to improve, what to skip, make sure every step is necessary. You become your own assembly line. One small mistake has a cascading effect, trips you up later. I can get caught up in the seconds. Every extra second something takes you to do, multiply it by how many of that thing you need to make. It adds up. So focus, buckle down, get into the zone, do whatever it takes, and before you know it, the last one. It's awesome. Too bad it'll totally burn your actual Christmas tree down though. You do. Damn right me. I only needed one of these. This guy went and made what? 15 of them? What a loser. All right, let's get out of here. Wasted too much time already. 
This will do, I guess. It's not the custom boards like I requested, but whatever. I think I'm starting to figure out the pattern. Depending on who you ask, that may or may not be a good thing. It's not always a matter of good and bad, but from what I've seen so far, this one's obvious. How can every move they make be both random and calculated? We seem to be always one move behind. But here's the thing about time. It's the great equalizer. They may have the upper hand now, but time has a way of unraveling even the most intricate plans. Our strategy? Use time to our advantage. Be patient where they are hasty, deliberate where they are impulsive. Time is not just a ticking clock, it's our ally. By understanding its rhythm, we can turn the tide. And finally, get a few of these damn answers we've been looking for. Yeah.